to the glory of the Father. Hallelujah. Thank you so much, team. That was awesome. That was beautiful. That touched the heart of God this morning. Because let me tell you, when you mention the name of Jesus, heaven listens in. It gets heaven's attention. The Holy Spirit comes. Demons tremble at that name. There's no other name. There's no other name. You just need to learn how to speak that name in faith, in worship, and in, in adoration. Oh, I only have a few moments. Let's get moving. Turn with me to 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. I need to hear a lot of amens because when you say amen, you, that means you're getting it. If you don't say amen, that means you're not. So I have to work it even harder and take even longer. So the more you say amen, the quicker I go. 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. It's a good fight. I've entitled my message this morning, It's a Good Fight. Paul spoke these immortal words, these powerful words. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, he said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. And I have kept the faith. Last night was one of the most anticipated boxing matches in a long time. People paid $90 to $100 for pay-per-view. An estimated 50 million people watched the fight. The pay was astronomical. Mayweather received around $200 million for the fight. McGregor received uh, a lot less, only $75 million. What a shame. Let's take an offering for him. By all standards, it was considered a good fight. Did it live up to all of its hype? Well, that's another question for another time. But I want to talk to you this morning about Paul the Apostle's testimony. Paul the Apostle was an amazing man. I'm not talking hype. I'm not talking exaggeration. He was arguably the greatest Christian who ever lived. Spiritually, he walked with Christ so intimately. His passion was, I want to know him. Experientially, he had a life-changing experiences with Christ. At one time, the Bible says he was caught up to the third heaven. Heard and experienced things that he could not fully express. Theologically, he was a scholar. He hammered out for us all of the great theological truths that form our Christian theology even to this day. Literally, literarily, literal, literally. Literary. Lee. He wrote over half of the New Testament. I knew when I was writing that down, I, I needed to phonetically spell that out. I did look it up. It is a word, not literally or literary, but literarily or airy. <laughs> My point is, he wrote over half of the New Testament. There was a lot of literary there. <laughs> Ministry wise, he planted churches in major cities around the Roman Empire, and he raised up mighty men and women of God. I'm talking about Paul the Apostle. He writes 2 Timothy at the end of his life. He was about to be martyred at the hands of the Emperor Nero at the end of 67 AD. He writes 2 Timothy in the summer or the fall of 67 AD, just a few weeks before he is about to be martyred. So here are his final words. In verse 7 of chapter 4, this sums up his life, his ministry. In those most memorable words, we find them in the passage that I read. I think we all understand, I think we all know that last words are always the most important the most striking. And here Paul utters what are the most significant words. 
when he says, when he boldly declares, when he confidently states, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. This should be a challenge to each one of us this morning. As that was Paul's, Paul's mission statement, if you will. See, for Paul, that was his true north. For Paul, it was the eye of the tiger. Stephen Covey wrote a, a book in uh, the late 80s and into 1990s. He wrote a book called Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. Stephen Covey. Brilliant piece of work. Uh, on the bestseller list for many weeks, it is still the standard uh, in many business schools and, and law schools. They still recommend it for reading. It's a great book. Seven Habits of Highly Effective People. The second habit is this. Begin with the end in mind. Begin with the end in mind. That, that is the title of the chapter. That is one of the habits. And basically what that means is begin every day, every task, every project with a clear vision of your desired direction and destination. And then continue by flexing your proactive muscles to make things happen. One of the best ways to incorporate this habit into your life is to develop a personal mission statement. Begin with the end in mind. What do you want that project to look like in the finished state? What do you want that ministry to look like? What do you want your life to look at? Begin with the end in mind. In other words, have a goal, have an objective. Know what you want it to look like. Paul had that. Paul is declaring it this morning. And for you and I, it would be advantageous for us to grab a hold of this thought. That we would be people who say, I fought a good fight. I finished the race. I've kept the faith. I believe that that is how Paul summed up his life. Let's look at it for a few moments. Number one, he said, I have fought the good fight. Notice, he said it's a good fight. He didn't say it was easy, but it's a good fight. That word fought comes from the Greek word agonizmai. And we get the word agonize. The Greek word has the, that, that part of agonize. It means to struggle, to labor. See, for Paul, he understood and he experienced in his life a continuous, strenuous conflict with three enemies, if you will. His battle, his agonizing, his fight were with three enemies. The world, the flesh, and the devil. The world is not the creation of trees and sky and sun and moon and stars. But when we talk about the world, the world is used in the Bible as that mentality of our society and culture that is in opposition to the Bible and truth. So Paul had to struggle and fight. He had to agonize against the philosophies and the ideologies that were in, 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 in opposition to what the word of God stated. We understand as Christians, we live in this world. Jesus says, you're in it, but you're not of it. You are different. And Paul would even say in another epistle, come out from among them. Be separated. Be different. Struggle and fight. You know, many Christians, they, they don't really understand the struggle and fight because they're not in the battle. 
They're going with the flow of culture, the flow of society, the flow of the ways of the world. And so there's no struggle because they're not trying to go against the grain. But Paul said, I fought a good fight. I've struggled against that which was ungodly and, 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 and unbiblical and untrue. And, and he had to face that in a culture, in a Roman Empire, where, where there was no form of godliness. Very similar to today in our culture, in our day. Brothers and sisters, we've got to fight the good fight. We've got to fight the good fight. But Paul didn't only have to fight against the world system. He had to fight against the flesh. Now when the Bible says flesh... Would you take your finger and pinch yourself? Would you just pinch yourself loud enough so you, I could hear you say, ow? Paul was not talking, when he said the flesh, he was not talking about your skin. He was not talking about your, 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 your bodily, physical makeup. What Paul was speaking about was that sinful nature that we all have and struggle with. That's why Jesus said you must be born again, born from above, have a spiritual rebirth, that that spiritual part of you might know newness and might have a connection with God and might now be able to live out the precepts and the truths of the word of God. But even though we're born again, the things that I want to do, I don't do. And, and when, when, when there's the desire to do what is right, evil is present with me. Oh, I know you're all looking so sanctimonious this morning. Please don't let me read your mail because I know you struggle with your flesh. What I mean by that, you struggle with anger. You struggle with covetousness. You struggle with lust. You struggle with addictions, whether it's nicotine, alcohol, whether it's, whether it's pornography, whether it's too much TV, too much Facebook, something you struggle with. That is your flesh. That is that sinful part of you that, 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 that tries to defeat you. Oh, come on, you're getting quiet. I'm, I'm going to have to work this a little bit more this morning. I don't think you're getting it. You're looking too holy for me this morning. Don't let me talk to your spouse. Don't let me be a fly on the wall when you get angry. He said, I fought the good fight. I had a fight. He would go so far as to say, I, I, I buffet my body. Some of you read that, I buffet my body. and Hallelujah. Go out to China buffet. No, no, no. Buffet, buffet. And that word means I beat my body black and blue. Now, please don't misunderstand me. He didn't mean that literally. He didn't beat his, his body, but, but spiritually he understood there was a struggle and he had to die to his flesh. He had to mortify the deeds of his flesh. When's the last time you, you mortified your flesh? You know what mortify means? It means kill it. That means you don't, you don't, you don't say every word that comes to your, out of your, into your mind and, and, and you don't let anger take control. You don't let your flesh pop off. You don't let, you don't let your sinful nature take control of you. you. You die to yourself. Paul said, I fought a good fight. I had a fight against the world. I had a flight, fight against the flesh. He would say in 1 Corinthians, he would say, I die daily. When's the last time you died to something? We're having a three-day fast coming up. The first week in September, five, six, seven, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. That's a good way to die to yourself. God has given us fasting to buffet our body, to say no to our flesh, no to fufu, no to chicken and rice, no to puff puffs, no to veal parmesan, no to lobster rolls. No, 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 no. So that we can say yes to God. Come on, somebody say amen. Don't let your flesh rise up even while I'm preaching. Do you know you can resist the word of God while the preacher's preaching? You can get an attitude and you can say, I shall not be moved. I shall not be moved. Not in a good way. But we need to break. Surrender. I fought a good fight. I fought against the world, the lies. That culture tells me, TV tells me, uh, the society tells me I fought against it. I fought against my flesh. Then I fought against the devil. 
Paul says we do not wrestle with flesh and blood, but our battle is with principalities and powers, spiritual wickednesses in high places. You've got an enemy that's out to steal and kill and destroy your life. And he don't take a vacation. He don't give up. He, he don't, you can't con the devil. He's out to kill and destroy your life, and he uses the medium of sin. You allow sin, sin is a killer. And we battle against spiritual forces. He struggled. He said, I fought a good fight. I fight against, I fight against that which is above me. The Bible says that, that Satan is the prince of the power of the air. I fight against that which is around me, the world. And I fight against that which is within me, my sinful nature. Do you know there's a battle going on? I talked with somebody recently and they, they were just sharing with me and, and they were saying, oh, pastor, it's been such a struggle. It's been such a struggle for me. I said, praise God. That's good. Because that means you are not giving in. You are resisting in your experience in a struggle. If there's no struggle, I heard some, oh, no, I don't struggle with anything. Then you're not alive or you're not in the game. You're not in the fight. Oh, Lord Jesus, we're going to take another offering. <laughs> you see, if the devil can't take you out, he will try to wear you out. He'll try to wear you out. Come on, this ain't my first sermon or my second. This ain't my first year or my second. 30 plus years walking with Christ, understanding that we've got to fight a good fight. It's a good fight. We got to struggle, but 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 you know what happens when you struggle against something? You're going to grow and develop. Any kind of resistance? See, I told that person. I says, you know what used to happen when you when you had these struggles, whether it's whether it's insecurities, whether it's fears, whether it's things of your past. You know what you did? You didn't struggle with it. You gave into it. You numbed the pain. You went to the bottle. You went to drugs. You went to some, some outlet. But what happened the next day? The pain is still there. The issues are still there. They only get worse. And then you just let the world, the flesh, and the devil run right over you. But now you're resisting. You're starting to say no. And you've got to live with, with some of those thoughts and fears and insecurities and struggle with them and, and keep on in spite of it. They will get better. God will give you peace, but sometimes you've got to learn through the pain. Oh, my Lord, I know it's too early in the morning, but, but it's still good. Take notes so you can meditate on it later. He said, I struggle. I struggle. I agonize. It is a fight, but it's a good struggle. It's a good fight. You see, no pain, no gain. You all say, oh, I, I would have fought Mayweather for $75 million, just get in the ring and get knocked out. It, listen, it ain't like that. You've got to get to the ring. <laughs> You've you got to go through it. You, bet, you have to have been through it already to get there. He didn't just walk in the ring and say, give me $75 million. He paid his dues. You and I as believers in Christ have to fight the good fight on the level you're at. We're all at different levels. You don't have to fight my fight. I don't have to fight yours, but you've got to fight your own fight. You've got to be able to say uh, at the end of it all, with, with beginning with the end in mind, you've got to be able to, to, to come to that day and say, I fought a good fight. I just saw somebody in our church, they had a t-shirt on. And, and it says, live your life so that when you die, your pastor doesn't have to lie at your funeral. That's a good shirt. I'm not going to lie at your funeral. Although I can be clever about how we can go about that. You heard of the two brothers that were very, very obnoxious, very mean, very ugly, and very unkind in their community. And when they both had money, the brother said, listen, when I die... I want you to make sure the preacher says, says I'm a saint. So he died. Brother gave the money to the preacher. He said, make sure you tell. At the funeral, say, my brother was a saint. So the preacher got up there at the funeral. He says, you know, so-and-so was a, a rotten person. He was no good. He was a criminal. He was the worst in the community. But compared to his brother, he was a saint. So we could be creative. 
But see, it's important. I want to ask you, are you a struggler or a yielder? Are you a struggler or a yielder? Are you, are you, are you still fighting a good fight? Or are you starting to give in? I've been around too long, pastoring too long to know that there are some people who are sitting under the voice of my words that are yielding. You better stop fighting a good fight. Please, brothers and sisters, let's say I fought a good fight. Secondly, I finished the race. The structure of the phrase in the original language, the emphasis is on finished. I think I'm going to finish this sermon maybe next week. Would you stand together with me this morning? I gave you a lot this morning. I don't want to give you too much meat. You've got you to you meditate upon it. Come on, just, just, just meditate upon the word of God. Come on, brothers and sisters, this morning. Are you fighting the good fight of faith? Come on, are you, you, you ready to make a fresh commitment not to yield to sin, not to yield to, to trying to be slick and, and do the work of God in your way, but do it God's way? Are you, are you fighting against that spirit of the world that says, take it easy, it's okay to indulge the flesh, everyone's doing it? Are you willing to resist today? Are you willing to say, I'm going to fight the good fight? Come on, can we pray together all over this place? I, I want you to be a, not only a hearer, but a doer of the word. Come on, faith without works is dead. Come on, you could say you believe a lot of things, but I believe in prayer, but if you don't show up for a prayer meeting, you don't believe it. I believe in God blessing me financially, but, it, but it, you could say that, but if you don't tithe, you don't believe it. Mm, come on, somebody ought to say amen. Come on, you can believe in loving your neighbor, but if you, you hate people and you walk by people and mistreat them, you don't believe what the Word of God says. But come on, today you're going to struggle against the world, the flesh, and the devil. Come on, you're going to struggle against everything the enemy would try to bring your way. You're going to be able to say, at the end of it all, I fought a good fight. Come on, brothers and sisters, get that in your spirit this morning. As we close in prayer, may you be a person that says, I'm going to fight the good fight of faith. May you speak that over your life. When the devil comes your way, would you let him know, listen, I'm not giving in. I'm going to fight against you. I'm going to overcome. I'm going to be more than a conqueror. I'm going to be going forward and not backward. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, we thank you today for the word of God. We thank you for the spirit of God in our lives. Quicken the word of God in our hearts and in our mind. Father, give somebody back their fight in Jesus' name. Lord, I just pray right now by the power of the Holy Spirit, God, if there's somebody that's about to give up and give in and make a foolish decision or choice, Father, let them come alive with a fight in their spirit. Let them take the mandatory eight count and get up again and fight again. Oh, they might have got knocked down, but let them get up and fight on. Holy Spirit, I pray right now in the name of Jesus, bless the word of God to the hearts and the minds of your people. Father God, I pray, Lord, that your people would understand the word, apply the word, and have courage and faith and walk out of here with a newness in their spirit that the devil might have got a few shots in, might have lost some ground, might have got knocked down, but they're getting back up in Jesus' name. Getting back up in Jesus' name. I prophesy it in Jesus' name. You're getting your fight back. Hallelujah. You're getting your fight back in Jesus' name. You're doing it God's way, and you're going to get God's results in Jesus' name. And everyone said amen and amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Before you leave, turn to a few people, say, I'm getting my fight back. I'm going to fight a good fight. I'm going to fight a good fight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, praise the Lord. I'm preaching myself happy this morning.